Okay, this is part two on uh, 35 horse four wheel drive Sears tractor. So I actually got the front axle for the most part figured out. I already had it in there. Uh, I pulled it back out so I can actually weld everything solid and then I'm gonna put it back. So the front axle assembly itself is only about six inches wide. So from here to here, um, I welded some washers onto the roller motors. Uh, which is basically the front spindles if it was two wheel drive so basically these uh red pieces here are bolted to the motor and then that's part of the hub which the tire bolts on so on how this works is basically this is the same for the most part the same thing as the original front axle it has these pipes that are about six and a half inches long welded on it or uh yeah welded on uh here and on the top uh on the inside just like that is and then that has a long bolt sticking through it, which uh, slightly goes up just ever so slightly through the washer that the big uh, pipe there does. So that way it can pivot right here. Unfortunately, there'll be no greasable, uh, like grease fittings or anything up here. So that kind of sucks, but it is what it is. So what I think I'm going to do here is I'm going to get this put on the tractor and I'll probably get the front tires put on it. And we will try to figure out what I'm supposed to do to actually get everything powered with the hydraulics. Okay, so I got the front axle put in. It's actually been about a week since I did the last part of the video. So, but that's been in. I haven't done anything else with it other than uh, put the axle in. And I got the hydraulic lines going to the back on these two uh, right angles here are just kind of threaded in there. But the rest of this is already solid. So you can see, so the motor in the back, uh, tip of my finger here, and then there is a O-ring to pipe thread, a half inch pipe thread adapter, and then a T here, and that goes to the hydraulic hose that'll go to the front. And then these here I'm thinking will go, uh, there'll be another hose that goes in there, which I'm gonna have to clean it because that's not gonna work for hydraulic oil there because that's rusty, so. I'll have to clean them out, but that'll go to the front, go to the end of these, which will have the other adapter, which I have on order now, and that'll uh, connect right up here. Well, these two pieces here will be coming off the motor, and then I have something else that'll go in there on order. Um, so the next thing I'm going to do here is I'm going to uh, cut this slightly better than it already is, because uh, I did kind of a bad job at it. And uh, get the steering column welded in place, which is right here. And then I'll get that welded in place. And then I'm going to come back and show you slash try to figure out the actual uh, hydraulic cylinder for it. So I got the steering column uh, welded into place. I cut the bottom portion of the bracket off. And then I put a couple little welds on the bottom. And then this plate on the top. I'll probably end up having a L L-shaped. I'll like angle iron go across here uh, just to make it a little bit more sturdy, but it is pretty strong for now. Um, I took the hoses off just to make it a little easier. I did make myself a note on uh, which port does what, so I know how it's supposed to go. Uh, the front, I have to take these fittings off on both fronts and then the back on this side because I just got in the mail the... Uh, o-ring to pipe thread adapters so i've got six of these total so there's the other five so these go in here to replace this or i'll show you on this one they, they'll go front and back to replace these pieces and then i can use my half inch uh, pipe thread hydraulic hoses which those two are right here and then i can do exactly what i did on this side on the other side so i'm gonna get that done and i'm gonna get this hooked up to the front axle and i will come back and show you the update okay so i got it quite a bit done since last time with the camera on i got the hydraulic hoses hooked up on both sides uh the six little parts i was showing you i got are on the front four of them on the front and the two of them in the back there there are just like i was showing you earlier in the video on this side there are now uh t's hooked up over there so both sides are now well there's there's two motors on each side as you see but they're now hooked up as if they were one and how this is going to work 
is there's going to be a double hydraulic valve that's going to be right here on this side so like uh like a gt18 high drive i think i showed you this before but the lever's right on the side there so the levers will be right here there'll be two of them right next to each other so if you want to steer sharper than what the power steering will offer you can just kind of drive it like a bulldozer and uh you can steer sharper but it does uh steer because i got the tie rod and power steering cylinder hooked up not the greatest steering i mean it's gonna work and be plenty fine it steers further that the other way than it does this way i think but it's not bad considering you know what it is and none of this is really meant to be together so but the cylinder is just uh it's not at the greatest angle but i mean then again there's not a whole lot of weight on the front i mean considering what hydraulics are capable of so it should be plenty um i've got that plate it's just a angled bracket uh basically just clamped to the frame which that bracket is actually for a uh tecumseh powered sears tractor to go with the battery tray to the engine that's just one i found that was pretty heavy duty gauge uh steel so i'm gonna use that um so the next thing for me to do is get, actually get that valve i was talking about and uh figure out the hoses that i need to buy from the four uh ports and then uh once i get that done i can put these hoses on to the power steering box and hook that up and it's ready for the engine over there which is the 35 horse v-twin and then the hydraulic pump so i'm going to uh come back once as i get some stuff here uh, figure it out and that part comes in the mail and i'll show you that okay so i got somewhat decent amount of stuff done since last time with the camera on i got the hydraulic valve in the mail it's a two spool um it's a vivor one but i bought it off of ebay cheaper than what they sell it as uh seems pretty high quality um this is the same as the one i had for my sears loader tractor uh from a couple years back that i sold uh, except this one has pipe thread and they are half inch which uh is really nice since this uses all half inch stuff so i had to do some interesting uh work here um so we got a right angle right here without a pipe attached to it and then a really short pipe here and then a slightly longer one and then a slightly longer one yet and the reason i had to do that is because i wanted all of the hoses to kind of go in one spot and I can't put multiple of this style of uh, right angle right next to each other because they actually kind of hit. Uh, there's not enough room for that. So I went to the store uh, yesterday and I got these four, uh, I think they're 24 inches long, hydraulic hoses. They were, I don't even want to know what I spent on hydraulics on this thing. It's getting a little ridiculous just on hoses. So on how this was going to work on kind of how I was explaining it before. So right underneath the steering wheel, which I don't know if that's exactly where these are going to stay or if I can bend them out of the way a little bit, but um, you can take the springs out by just taking these covers off and take the springs out. And then that way, if you push it forward, it stays there. So if you want to drive it like a normal tractor, you can just push these forward. Uh, pick however fast you want to go. Just push them both straight forward at the same time and they'll stay there once I take them springs out. And then, oh, you want to turn a corner, you just push, it's hard to do with one hand here, but you just push one side more than the other, and you can drive it kind of like a bulldozer, and just ignore the steering, or if you want to turn sharper than what the steering offers you, you could just, you know, run one side. So that's going to be pretty cool. Um, the reason for that is you can't just hook four hydraulic motors together and expect it to actually work. So, I mean, it'll work. Just um, an example of that is if I just did a one spool valve, let's just say that rear tire, that rear tire, and this front tire had traction, and this one was just hanging in the air. Those three tires would be stopped and doing nothing, and this tire here would be spinning. So, by doing it this way, there is a so called differential from the front and back, but it's locked side to side. Uh, which it'll still steer quite easy, um, just like it, a normal machine would. 
Um, the only thing is, let's just say you put a lot of weight on the front or a lot of weight on the back. It won't really do any good because if you put a front end loader on this and the, therefore gives the front more traction, the back tires will just spin and the front ones won't, if that makes sense. Um, because basically they're, they're teed together. So if the fluid, the fluid will go to whatever side has the least amount of resistance since they're teed together. I can't hook them in series, meaning like in line because the rear tires are bigger than the front ones. And if I was to hook them in series, so like, you know, the outlet port of the back motor would go in the inlet of the front and then it'd go back type of a thing. If I was to do that, uh, since tire size aren't the same, it would probably not be good. So it would pretty much, back tires that would be going faster than the front ones, it would just drag the front end. So what's going to happen here, the, this is the inlet port that'll come with a right angle here. Go along the side to the hydraulic pump, which will mount someplace along right here. Well, of course, it'll be back further. I just can't set it there and show it to you at the same time. But there'll be a hydraulic hose coming from here, which will set about here. Turn the corner here. Come along the side of the frame, then go in there. Uh, the gas tank and reservoir, I'm still undecided on. Thinking gas tanks are going to go here with a custom seat bracket since... Seat spring ain't going to work on here because the hydraulic hoses are in the way. And I don't have one either. So I'm just going to make my own seat setup. And I'm hoping I can figure out a hydraulic reservoir that can go right under here. The battery tray. Or underneath the frame. Or I don't really know where else it would go. But uh, that is it for this video because I got to figure out a coupler for the engine that is just like this one. Except... A one and one eighth uh, bore diameter instead of a one inch because the engine is so big it's got a one and one eighth shaft. Um, I may end up having to just replace both because I've spent two hours last night trying to find one exactly like this and I can't find it. Um, so I got to figure that out. And basically the hydraulic reservoir and this line here. Once I get that stuff figured out the next video will be up. And I should be driving it in the next video. If not, the next video will be early on the one after that. So that is it for this one. Uh, let me know what you think down in the comments. And thanks for watching.